I'm Crystal, and I live with my husband Alex and our cat Riley. Despite living with lupus, I try to enjoy life to its fullest. So come share in life's big and little moments with me. In my shoes. <laughs> hey guys. <laughs> Look at my little Riley peeking out at us. <laughs> hey cutie. You had a good night. We have some updates on Mr. Riley here. Um... Sorry for the lack of doll videos. Obviously, I'm a little preoccupied with this little one right now. For, ver for obvious reasons. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update as to what has gone on today. Um, first off, I had my eye exam and everything is good. Um... So far, so good. No damage from Plaquenil, but I am at the five-year mark, so they told me that from this point on, <laughs> hey buddy, from this point on, um, they have to be a little bit more diligent um, because it's usually after um, five years of being on Plaquenil that you're kind of at a higher risk. But again, it's still pretty uncommon, but they just like to monitor things to make sure that if anything starts to happen, that it's caught early. Um, so that's that. The second thing is, I think we have finally come to a decision um, in regards to what we're going to do with um, Riley. So, um, I first off want to thank Lori, um, of Crafty Lori. She's, um, been a vet tech for over 25 years and she has offered me a lot of, um, wonderful advice and has been part of helping me make, um, a decision, um, but it's it's also been a combination of things. So, anyways, um, I was considering a second opinion. So last night I was looking around at other vets. Um, I had found a holistic um, veterinary clinic um, in the city here, and I had looked into them. But the initial consultation was going to be a hundred and ninety five dollars, which is way more than our current vet. Um, and really, I just didn't know what more they could really do um, that we could afford anyway. Um, and I looked up reviews at all different um, vet clinics in and around our area and a lot of them had mixed reviews or bad reviews um, just saying that the vets didn't really seem to care much about the animals that they seemed just money hungry and you know, was just saying like, oh, you need to do this test, this test, this test, or this treatment or whatever. So I didn't really like the reviews. Um, and so again, I decided to, I believe I had looked up reviews of Riley's vet back when we got Riley, which is what made us decide to go to his vets in the first place. But I thought I would just like Google it again. And sure enough, five out of five, like this vet has a five star rating that we take him to. Every single person that left a review was beyond happy with this vet um, and had nothing but wonderful things to say. There was nothing less than a five star rating straight across the board um, 
five stars. So that made me feel a little bit more confident in um, our vet. It's called the Cat Hospital, and it's just one veterinary um, veterinarian that works out of um, the Cat Hospital, um, Dr. Thomas, and she deals strictly with cats, no other animals. It's just a cat hospital. And I've always, from day one, felt confident in her. Um, 100% trust her. Um, and she seems very knowledgeable. Um, she always seems to be up to date on current research. Um, you know, she's always talking about conferences that she's gone to for, I'm sorry, am I disturbing you by talking? <laughs> okay. Oh, you just wanted to switch positions. I get it. <laughs> Say hi, everybody. He's purring. Can you hear him? <laughs> He's purring. He also, I noticed last night, has some fur missing under his eye here and there's a scratch mark there so he must have scratched himself and he must have done it yesterday because that definitely I would have seen that on Saturday and I'm sure the vet would have seen it too so I just noticed that last night I don't know how he managed that because I just cut his nails recently but <laughs> he did that before a few years ago so it's not the first time um but anyways I feel very confident in his vet um and you know she always has her laptop with her if she needs to look up any current research or information while we're there and she's very thorough and she's always um behind on her appointments because she takes a long time like she takes her time with every client she answers all of their questions she doesn't rush the appointment um, she never forces the cat um, to do things that they don't want to do she's very calm and quiet with the cats and she talks to them like they were a human patient and treats them like a human <laughs> and um, so she just kind of lets the cat take the lead and she just has a way about her that she makes the cats at ease um so with that said um i don't think i've i've decided not to get a second opinion because i really do trust her and i actually called her today to ask some questions um just to verify some things um you know, I asked her about the possibility of a fatty tumor and she explained to me that she has seen plenty of fatty tumors in her career and she would definitely know right away if it was a fatty tumor just by the feel of it and the location of it. She said if it was a fatty tumor, it would be between the skin and the muscle. Um, but, um, she said this was definitely, um, inside his stomach. Um, not even just, not even sitting on the outside of his stomach, but inside his stomach. And, um, so that definitely tells her because, she, you know, she's, she's dealt with a lot of those types of tumors too. She knows that it's not good. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I asked her about, um, would blood work help to do that first before an ultrasound? She said she didn't suggest blood work because really all the blood work would, um, tell us is if, of like how all of his organs are functioning. Um, but she's not concerned about any of that right now. She said the location of the tumor 
um, it could basically, it could affect his liver, but she doesn't feel like it would be affecting anything else at this point, um, unless it spreads. Um, and so really the ultrasound would basically tell us, um, the type of tumor, like the type of cancer it is, um, and, and if it's spread, um, and so she, she wasn't sure on the exact price of the ultrasound. Um, she said she could contact the internal medicine clinic that we would have to go to for that, um, to get a proper quote. But from her memory, she believes we would be looking at about $800 for the ultrasound. And so we thought about it, but we thought, well, we know that we're not going to go through with chemo and all that crazy treatment. Um, you know, we don't feel like we want to put him through that. <laughs> Look at him. He's so cute. Um, so we kind of thought, well, really, um, what is the point of getting the ultrasound when we know we're not going to do treatments? Um, because really, like, the only really re reason to, that I would want to do the ultrasound is if I wanted to do treatment, because obviously then you need to know what you're dealing with and so you can treat it properly but we are not going to put him through any of that. So we have come to the decision not to go ahead with the ultrasound. Um, it, yes, it's kind of scary not knowing what's going on inside of him, but we also feel that so long as he is carrying on his normal self and doesn't seem to be out of sorts or in pain or discomfort, then, you know, obviously he's a happy boy. <laughs> Look at him. Um, so we want to keep him that way as long as we possibly can by, you know, changing his diet um, and just keeping him happy and stress-free. And I think you know, we, we will know when, you know, when it, um, starts to progress, obviously we will, you know, he will show us signs when he starts to not be well. And I mean, all I can say is we're just praying that he will have, he will still have, you know, a couple of good years with us, hopefully. I mean, we don't know if it's a slow progressing tumor or what, but we're praying that it is and that he will have lots of good days ahead of him and we'll just cherish every day with him until whatever happens. And I mean, really what it boils down to is, I mean, it's not all that different than my previous two cats where we had never taken them to the vet. So, I mean, had we, we may have, you know, had a forewarning of, you know, them having some sort of tumor or whatever, and that's what probably took them. Um, but, you know, we, they, you know, we were, we didn't know anything. We didn't know anything was growing in them and they seemed fine and healthy until you know, the last few days of their life. So, you know, I, yes, it's, it's kind of scary knowing, um, that the, of the possibility of, you know, his days being numbered. But again, even if we hadn't have known about the tumor, um, you know, you never know when, when your cat will, 
pass, just like us humans, we never know when our time is. So, you know, yeah, it's hard to think about knowing that he has this. Um, because, of course, we never expected that um, so soon. Um, but, you know, it'll just help us to cherish him even more. Not that we don't already, but you know what I mean. So that's what we've decided to do. And I think I am quite at peace with that. So we're just going to basically try to carry on as if everything is normal, as hard as that would be to do. We're just going to carry on as if nothing um, has happened and that everything is normal because, um, as Lori actually said to me, which makes a lot of sense, cats can pick up on your stress and it can cause them stress. So we want to keep him happy and healthy. So we want to make sure that we treat him like we've always treated him and just act like everything's normal. Um, so with that said, I have updates on the food situation. So we put out, <laughs> he's giving you a little show here. He's very cute when he sleeps. Um, so we put out the new food um, yesterday afternoon. And he sniffed it a couple times and walked away. Um, and I kept watching him for the remainder of the afternoon and evening. And he was not eating at all. And that concerned me because I thought, well, I don't want him to go without food. If he's going to be picky about this new food and not eat it. Like, I just thought, well, maybe he'll eventually get hungry enough that he will just eat it. But at the same time, because he's already lost weight, I was very nervous about letting him go too long without food. So, um... Before I went to bed, I decided to mix in a little bit of his old food along with a little bit of that um, sample from the vet that he got into that he seemed to like so much. And so he went over and he had a few pieces of the, um, of the sample. But the strange thing is that he would take a piece from his bowl and carry it away from the bowl and eat it over on the carpet. And then he'd go back to the bowl for another one and do the same thing. And it was like he didn't want to eat near the bowl. It was really bizarre. Um, but he ate some food and so that made me happy. <laughs> So I left it like that overnight and when I got up in the morning I could tell that he had eaten quite a bit of his old food plus the sample food but I couldn't tell if he had eaten any of the new um, blue brand of food but I went off to work and I was thinking about him all day worrying about whether or not he was eating. <laughs> So, um, I was happy to come home and check on him and he was sleeping up here when I got home and I went over and I looked and there wasn't too much left of the sample food and his old food, but there was a lot of the new food left. So I couldn't really tell again if he had eaten any of the new food. So I picked up the bowl, put it up on the island, and I picked out whatever was left of his old food and the sample food. And he came over because he wanted to know what I was doing. Um, and so I placed just one piece of the new food in front of him on the kitchen floor. And he sniffed it, and then that was it. So then I gave him a piece of his old food and he ate it. 
and then I gave him a piece of the sample food and he ate it. Then again, I put down a piece of the blue brand of food and he ate it. And I was like, oh, okay, he ate the new food. So I gave him another piece of the new food and he ate that. And I gave him three more pieces of the new food and he gobbled those up. So I was like, ah, good. He likes the new food. He will eat it. So I proceeded to place his bowl back on the mat. This is, this is the mat that we usually had his water and his food, but we had moved the water over onto this little rug here and just had his food here. Um, <laughs> and so I put his food bowl down here and he came trotting over and he sniffed it and took a little tiny nibble and then walked away. And I was like, that is so weird. Um, so, so um, as I was making dinner, I was watching him come and take some water because we had his water bowl here. He'd drink a little bit of water and then he would look at his food bowl here and just stare at it. He would sit right here and stare at the bowl here. And I'm going, what is the deal? Like, why doesn't he want to go over there? So as I was waiting for dinner to cook in the oven, I decided to take his food bowl and put it right here. And as soon as I did that, he came over and started to devour the food, the new food. And I was like, well, that's interesting. It seems as though he did not like the bowl being there. So I called Alex and I'm like, look at it. I've never seen him eat like, like this. Like even with his old food, um, he would go over here and he would nibble at it and he would make a huge mess. Like he'd get all these crumbs. So it wasn't like he was eating full pieces. He was like kind of spitting them out, whatever. And he would have crumbs all over here. And so, you know, he would nibble a little bit and then leave and then come back and nibble a bit and leave. But he never sat there and really like ate and, you know, good. He was devouring it. And I, and we were shocked. We were like, wow. <coughs> so Alex was like, oh my gosh. He's like, could it be that he didn't like his bowl there because it's so close to the garbage can? Like, maybe he could smell garbage and it was like, ew, like, why do I want to eat there, right? All these years, this is where his food and water's been. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to move his water around the corner here because Alex had recently read that cats actually don't like their water, like, directly beside their food because if food gets in it they don't like that so we've put his water over here and now we have his food on the end of the rug so it's still kind of in the corner but it's not also I kind of had this the thought that if it wasn't the garbage maybe he felt a little too confined in this little corner so we put it here so he has more space and oh my gosh guys he um, came back later and he ate a lot more and he has been drinking more water than I have ever seen him drink. He's been coming to drink from his bowl all night um, and he's eaten about, well he ate some from here when, when I had it here and then I think he came back about two other times to eat from here. And this is like the most I have ever seen him eat or drink, like ever. Um, and he always used to go and jump in the bathtub, wanting us to turn on the tap in the bathtub for him to drink. But tonight, he has not gone in the bathtub at all. He comes right here and has like a really good drink. So I am so relieved and happy that he's eating really well and drinking 
like better than ever before. And he's actually eating the new healthy food. Um, so that's really good. I just feel bad that we didn't think of this setup sooner. Um, you know, we just always assume because we would see him eating here that he was okay with this location. But now that I've seen him really eat compared to how he would like nibble, um, it's, it's clear to me that he probably has never really been a fan of eating in this area. Um, so now that we've moved it, he will hopefully do a lot better with his eating and drinking. And <laughs> again, I was like, wow, like, why didn't we think of this years ago? Um, you know, so two new things we've discovered about the location and then, you know, the idea of putting the chair by the window for him so he can look outside. And I just feel bad that it's taken us seven years to figure that out. Um, <laughs> um, but at least we did and we can make those changes now. So, so yeah, so that is the update and I'm I'm thrilled that he's eating the new food. It makes me relieved. Um, so I don't have to worry about him going hungry. And I know that he's eating food that is so much healthier for him. Um, so that makes me happy. <laughs> so yeah, so I've just been watching YouTube. <laughs> And having some dark chocolate. This is like 70% dark chocolate. It is so good. And I'm about to do some reading in the very best Canadian baby name book. Um, looking for names for my serenity. And I've written down some of your name suggestions that I really liked. But I also want to go through this and get some more ideas because she should be coming home very soon. Um, I believe I will be paying her off around the end of this week, which means she should probably be here within the next week or two. So I am super, super excited about that. Um, I didn't expect to be able to bring her home so soon, but... I'm super happy that I can. Um, so yeah, so I've got to figure out a name for her like ASAP. So I got to look through this. Um, and I think that's about it for this video. Just wanted to give you guys some updates and thank you so much again to everybody for all their prayers and support. And advice it just it means so much to us and it really has been a comfort and a help um and yeah so this week I am planning to take Ben to an indoor playground as well as a big chapters bookstore downtown and on Friday afternoon when I get out of work I am going to go visit Margaret um, we figure we should have a little visit before my first day of work because her mom will have to leave like as soon as I get there. So it's been a few months since I've seen Margaret, so I'm sure there's been some changes in her routine and whatnot. So I need to be filled in on all the new stuff and also, you know, just nice to see Margaret again before I come back. Um, her mom is going to be signing her up for music classes again in the fall for me to take her to, which I'm super excited about because I love those classes. It's a nice 10 minute walk to the class and I just love being at the music class with her. It's so much fun. So I am looking forward to that. So I have this week and I have next week with Ben and then I will be back with Margaret. So anyways that is it for this video thank you so much for watching and good night
from Riley and me. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. He is tuckered out. He's probably got a nice full belly. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> yes, hi, Riley. You like that over there? I'm getting some sun bathing in. <laughs> So he likes that, especially now that there's a blanket there, right, buddy? <laughs> yeah, there he is, chilling, getting some fresh air, right, buddy? <laughs>